What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. And the New York Giants, following the signing of wide receiver Cole Beasley, now have 15 wide receivers on their roster. I know, that's a crazy number. If you didn't know, on average, NFL teams carry six wide receivers into the regular season, which means that the Giants are going to have to trim their roster down pretty significantly between now and the start of the regular season. So, 15 wide receivers, they got to get down to around six. Maybe they hold seven. I don't think there's a chance that they hold eight wide receivers, but stranger things have probably happened in the NFL. But realistically, the Giants will be cutting around the nine receivers between now and the end of training camp, the end of preseason. So we're going to go ahead today in this episode and discuss which six wide receivers will make the, the roster. And if they do hold up to eight, who could be those other two guys that straggle along and somehow fight their way onto the final roster? And ultimately, who are those players that are going to be released? We're going to talk about that and everything else in between. But before we dive into all of it, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Um, and go ahead and follow us on social media at Fireside Giants on Instagram, Twitter, Threads, Facebook. We're on all of those platforms. So, all right, let's go ahead and dive into it. Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And what are your thoughts on the Giants having 15 wide receivers on their roster in the first place? I'm doing pretty good, man. And you look at the Giants roster, obviously, there's going to be a lot of position battles. There's going to be a lot of different kind of things going on here. And we kind of have an idea of who's going to make this roster, make this 53 man. And ultimately there's a lot of guys, you know, that are camp bodies. A lot of guys that are just here to compete for special teams roles and uh, practice squad players. And, you know, the 15 guys we're going to talk about, um, some of them have more NFL experience than others, of course. And, you know, yesterday, you know, I think it's a good opportunity to kind of kick off on Cole Beasley as one of those guys, because 34 years old, you know, obviously very productive throughout his career, only had like 35 yards last season with the Bills and Buccaneers. Um, so you're kind of looking at a player here who knows Brian Dable, knows Joe Shane, kind of knows the system they're running, uh, can certainly help you out of the slot. You know, you got Shepard, you got Wandell in the pup list, so you, you need another body out of the slot there for training camp. Maybe he fights his way on. You know, maybe he dethrones one of those guys. Uh, Cole Beasley being 34 years old definitely doesn't suggest that he's going to be um, an impact player for us, but I certainly could see him, you know, sneaking his way onto the roster one way or another. It really depends because we have so many slot guys. I just don't know if we have enough roster spots, to be honest. But I think the Giants just wanted to give him a chance to compete, you know, bring in a guy who has experience and um, maybe can elevate other people. So, you know, speaking of Cole Beasley, I think that he's probably the most likely of those kind of practice squad level dudes or the, guy, the guys who are bringing in for camp to actually make the roster. Um, but there is some promising young guys. You know, Bryce Ford Wheaton's a guy we're going to discuss momentarily. But, you know, what, what do you think about Cole Beasley and obviously his chances? So I actually think upon further review, upon further reflection, Cole Beasley has a pretty decent chance of making the final roster. Now, I don't think that he makes it outright. I think that the Giants have to have one to two injuries, and then Cole Beasley seems like a really strong contender. There's a few reasons why. I mean, you know that he's experienced. I think he's a 14-year NFL veteran or something. He's 34 years old, um, and he spent three years with Brian Dable, which is a massive plus for him. You know, he's already got familiarity with members of the coaching staff and with the playbook as well, or at least a good portion of the playbook doesn't know all the Kansas city stuff from Mike Kafka, but he knows a lot of the Brian Dable stuff in the playbook. So Cole Beasley could be a good contributor for this team as a veteran slot receiver option. But again, he's going to need some injuries to happen in order to make the roster, but there are a couple of injuries kind of still pending. So if Sterling Shepard and Wandale Robinson are not ready for week one of the regular season, Granted, they're both expected to be ready, but if anything happens, setbacks, or maybe they just don't recover to full strength by the time week one rolls around, I could see Cole Beasley being elevated onto the onto the final 53-man roster or 55-man roster now uh, in place of either Robinson or Shepard. I think that the rule is if you start out on the PUP list, I think you miss the first four weeks of the regular season at least, and then you come off at any other point. So that's always a possibility. Um, as we get to training camp, I think that the reason Cole Beasley was signed is because it's very likely that Shepard and Robinson are both going to start camp on the PUP list. So I think that you could see those guys unavailable, Cole Beasley available, putting in some good work. And then once we get to the regular season, if those guys still are not ready to play in week one, Beasley can just continue to maintain that role until they are ready. I don't think he's a long-term solution. I don't think he's on the roster for the entirety of the regular season, but 
if you have injuries at the position, Sterling Shepard and Wandale Robinson still recovering, I think Cole Beasley can step in, fill in that void pretty nicely for the time being. Again, not long term. I don't think he plays the whole regular season, but if he's got to be out there for four weeks, I think it makes sense to hold on to him. And another receiver that I also think could sneak their way onto this roster due to injuries in front of them is Colin Johnson. Now, Colin Johnson also had a season ending injury last year, but it was early on. It was in the preseason rather than being during the regular season. So he should be further along than some of these other guys like Shepard and Robinson. What we've heard about Colin Johnson, he's mostly healthy. I don't think there's really uh, any chance he starts out training camp on the PUP list. And I think that considering how well he was playing the last training camp and how well he's played in the regular season in the past as a starter in the NFL, Colin Johnson has a chance to make the roster um, and probably see some playing time because he's one of the outside receivers and the Giants don't have many of those so Alex when you're looking at the depth on this roster and we're going to go through a few more of these guys that are very likely to be cut but when you look at some of these outside wide receivers right not a whole lot of depth there Colin Johnson and maybe Bryce Ford Wheaton and who else might stand out to you as guys that make the roster purely based on size alone I mean based on size alone I mean I had to say Colin Johnson kind of reference here is probably the most likely if we're if we're gonna talk about a player with some upside I really liked what I saw from Colin Johnson last year obviously the sample size is very very small and of course the of the thorn Achilles um this is a player who has pretty underrated speed for his size and the catch radius is certainly there you know Daniel Jones was actually developing some really nice chemistry before he went down um, a couple other guys that kind of stand out, you know, Jeff Smith. I actually like Jeff Smith. Um, not so much as a guy that you're going to lead on as a receiver. He was with the Jets, but according to some of my friends who are Jets fans, unfortunately, they say Jeff Smith is a tremendous special teams player, like a really good special teams player. So, you know, if you can't make an impact as a receiver, you, you got to have to do something else or you got to do something in another unit. And I think that he could be a, a good gunner uh, for this team. And, you know, the, the Giants really upgraded their athleticism this offseason to kind of help in those areas like you know gunner kick returners like that that kind of specialized uh you know position stuff i feel as though now they have some guys who are just pure athletes that can make some make some plays make some stuff happen um jeff smith's a really good special teams player he's actually not the worst receiver either he's fine he's a it's probably average, um, maybe slightly below average, but you know, a guy that has that value on special teams, he's young, maybe a little bit more upside to tap, could make a little bit of an impact on this team if, if worse comes to worst. Uh, but I, I do think that Jeff Smith is a low-key guy. Like, Keep an eye on him. I think Bryce Ford Wheaton ends up in the practice squad. I think Jamison Crowder ends up actually not making this roster at all. I think Pipple Tid probably ends up on the practice squad, uh, but I could see Jeff Smith sneaking onto the roster because of his uh, special teams value. I will say the same thing about Khalil Pimpleton. I think Pimpleton could sneak onto the roster as a return man, like just a pure return specialist. Yes, he's a wide receiver. He could maybe contribute and step out there on the offense if need be. But his true value lies as a punt and kick returner. Um, he was special teams player of the year, I believe, in college, his final season. Don't remember where he played at, but I know that he was some sort of special teams or return man player of the year, uh, brought home a few kicks for touchdowns. And I think he returned in the preseason last year with Detroit. I think he returned a kick for a score as well the guy's got some some shiftiness to his game and he's got the ability to make an impact as a return man so i could see him maybe sneaking onto the roster uh purely just to play on special teams like you mentioned with jeff smith jeff smith to me i don't know too much about him doesn't really drive me crazy i think that i'd rather go with some of these younger guys like a khalil pimpleton but there's a lot of players on this roster let's power through a few more of them you mentioned bryce ford wheaton um i kind of hinted at, at him earlier I think that he could be a player where if we do have any injuries to those outside wide receivers, he immediately gets thrust into the spotlight, you know, knock on wood. Of course, I'm really hoping to see that Isaiah Hodgins breakout season, but he's expected to be our X wide receiver. If he does go down with an injury at any point during training camp or preseason, you're going to see significant increased playing time out of Colin Johnson and Bryce Ford Wheaton. And then it kind of becomes a battle of those two guys. So that's kind of an interesting scenario that could lay out here, depending on any injuries that might happen to the Giants. But as we look at the rest of the players on this roster, there's some guys, Jaden Mickens. We talked about David Sills a little bit yesterday, Makai Polk. I don't think any of these guys have a realistic chance of making the roster, but probably good camp bodies. And eventually they will be there on the practice squad. But Alex, Again, like I mentioned earlier, most NFL teams keep only six wide receivers. They, may, they might want to stretch it out to seven since they have 15 rostered. But all this, my six wide receivers that I think are locks, absolute locks to make the final 53-man roster. And you can let me know if you think there's any changes to be made to the six-person list. So Darius Slayton, Locke, Isaiah Hodgins, Jalen Hyatt, Paris Campbell, Wandale Robinson, Sterling Shepard. 
Now, Wandale Robinson and Sterling Shepard are the two that you could maybe debate due to injuries, due to the slot position being a little oversaturated for the Giants. Maybe they go in a different direction, bring on a big body like Colin Johnson instead. But those are my six wide receivers. What are your thoughts on that list? I like that list. I mean, Darius Slayton's a lock. Hodgins, we talked about him the other day. Love Hodgins and what he offers his team in the second year and already having some chemistry with Daniel Jones. Hyatt, of course, is a lock. Paris Campbell's a lock. Juan Nell's a lock. Shep's a lock. Um, you know, I, I, you know what? I don't even – maybe it's too much to say Shep's a lock. Maybe he's not a lock. Maybe Cole Beasley could dethrone him there. Um, I think that in terms of probability, you're right, that Sterling Shepard's going to make this team. But, uh, you know, the injuries – the fact that, you know, he could play both inside and out, he could play in the slot and play on the boundary. That certainly helps. Um, I don't know if I don't know if he'll make this roster, but like who's the alternative, right? Like you're wondering who could replace him. It's Cole Beasley, um, it's Colin Johnson. And look, if you look at this team and you look at these guys that you've listed here, I mean, Slayton's an outside guy, Hodgins is an outside guy, Hyatt can play inside and out, Campbell's slot, Robinson's slot. You probably want another guy that can play inside out, which is Shep. Cole Beasley's played about 86% of his career snaps in the slot, so you're not going to look at him as a primary guy that you can use versi in a versatile way. Uh, once Wandell's back fully healthy, Cole Beasley will not see the field. Shep may see the field in certain packages. He's actually a very good run blocker, so that's kind of a variable not to forget about when it comes to Sterling Shepard. But I think that's, in terms of probability, I think your, your six is definitely the most likely. But, you know, I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts below on – you know, who you think could sneak in over Shep. I know some of you guys don't think Shep should be on this team. Um, you think that he should be gone because of the injuries, whatever it might be. Who would you have replace him? Would it be Colin Johnson or Jeff Smith with the special teams value or Bryce Ford Wheaton with the speed and, you know, rookie out of West Virginia, some someone a little bit more upside um, coming into a, a healthy campaign? You know, what, what? who do you think could replace him? Because right now I think Shep probably leads the charge because of his value and his experience. But, you know, I'm not going to call it a lock. I'll say he's probably 75, 80% chance he makes the team. Yeah, well, he's got to be healthy. That's first and foremost. If he's not ready to play in week one, the Giants have to look for other options. You know, they need to get another guy out there who can contribute immediately. Shepard could maybe be on the PUP list to start out the season, eventually gets worked into the lineup. It's all about being healthy for him, which is what we've been saying for Shep for the last, I don't know, four years at this point. He's just got to learn to stay healthy. Um, not that it's any fault of his own, of course, but... He's just struggled to stay on the field. So if he's not ready to go by week one, I think, as you mentioned, Alex, Cole Beasley could be a really strong contender to fill in for Shepard. Um, but I also think they could go in a different direction, add some more size to this receiving core with Colin Johnson or maybe Bryce Ford Wheaton. I want to talk about Bryce Ford Wheaton again just a little bit because I think that this is this is by far the most exciting undrafted free agent that the Giants signed and probably the most exciting undrafted free agent that they've signed in the last several years. I think Ford Wheaton, you look at his athleticism, it's rare. I mean, he's arguably the most athletically and physically gifted wide receiver um, that the Giants have had on their roster in the last decade, you know, maybe since OBJ. I don't know. Like Bryce Ward Wheaton is that guy. He's six foot four, runs four three speed. He could jump out of the gym. The guy is just crazy gifted. Uh, but there's a reason he went undrafted. You know, he he didn't have the best production in college. He didn't run the cleanest routes. Didn't necessarily look like an NFL ready wide receiver. But what happens if he does start to stand out during training camp? You know, because the Giants signed him to that fully guaranteed practice squad contract, basically guaranteeing that he won't be going anywhere throughout this season. He will be on the Giants practice squad. But do you think realistically, Alex, that he could fight his way onto the regular season roster? Or do you think this is a guy that the Giants want to keep on the practice squad for at least a year, continue to develop and see maybe what he has in year two? Yeah, I mean, look. Right now, you need to go with players who are going to give you the best chance at winning football games. Um, I'm, I can't sit here and tell you that he is going to be the best chance giving us wins. You know what I mean? Like, you're looking at Darren Waller. Like, and, and for what it's worth, I've labeled Darren Waller a receiver at this point in his career. Like, I don't even think he's a tight end anymore. He's more so a jumbo slot. He'll play some inline snaps, maybe 20% or so. But, you know, he is a receiver. He's a big body. That's how they're going to use him. And, you know... I just think that with developmental players, undrafted guys specifically, they have to make themselves indispensable one way or another. They have to have Victor Cruz like preseasons. They got to have, you know, special teams value as a return man, or whatever it might be. They got to showcase consistency. They got to know the offense. They got to start to assimilate with some of the, the second string team and the first string team. You know, you got to just outplay guys that have been in the league, like guys that are better than you right then. And there and ultimately like it's it's a difficult task we've seen it happen before but it's unlikely i think 100 that uh, some of these guys you know bryce ford wheaton and 
um, you know, some of these younger dudes are probably going to end up in the practice squad, like Khalil Pimpleton. I don't think anyone's going to snag them because they are like, you know, we're talking undrafted guys with a lot of, they need a lot of development. I don't think that people are going to come calling for their names unless they have no choice. Like keep in mind the giants had one of the, probably the worst receiver core in the NFL last year. Um, and we weren't, we were not really going out and plucking guys all the time. Like we got Hodgins, but aside from that, we were going with guys in our own system. Um, and ultimately, you know, I don't think other teams are looking to, you know, go out and find other, other players like, Bryce Ford Wheaton's of the world. Um, there's a ton of guys of speed. You know what I mean? A lot of guys of speed, but not a lot of guys that can actually put it all together at the NFL level. So I think it probably ends up in the practice squad, which is totally fine, but I think he definitely has a ton of upside and you, you may want to protect him in some ways. You know, you may want to figure out a way to, I don't know, give him an opportunity here or there. Uh, you know, I think you could protect some of these players. So ultimately that's a guy I definitely have some excitement about, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you like he's going to make an impact during his rookie season. Yeah, and for what it's worth, players on the practice squad can have tremendous value to a team. We've heard plenty of stories in the past. And a guy like Bryce Ford Wheaton in particular, let's say there's a uh, there's one week the Giants are going up against a team, um, and I, I can't name a receiver off the top of my head. You could maybe say A.J. Brown, right? Super fast, super strong, and physical. They need more of those physical presences out there during practice. Bryce Ford Wheaton is going to get more playing time in practice just to help simulate for these cornerbacks what it's like to go up against a physical presence like that. And that's something important to keep in mind. So players like this are really valuable to stash on your practice squad for practice in particular. So getting those cornerbacks used to going up against a taller corner um, and getting practice reps against that, or, or taller receiver rather, especially when the Giants don't have many big-bodied wide receivers, it is very important. So there's a lot of value that you can draw from these players, whether they're on the practice squad or the regular season roster. And of course, it's going to be really interesting to see what does shape out throughout training camp. We're going to be updating you on everything. And before we wrap, Alex, I do want to just throw in a little fun segment here at the end. Let's talk Giants uniforms really quickly before we wrap. I think that the Giants, it is time to go back to the throwback uniform. You know, they brought back the throwbacks for a few games last season. They're doing it again this year. I think that those classic uniforms are perfect. Like Chef's Kiss, my favorite uniforms of all time. They need to bring them back, but ditch the Navy helmet. It throws everything off for me. It always has. Every time I look at those old pictures of Lawrence Taylor, and sometimes his helmet just looks black because the Navy is so dark, bring the color rush helmet, that metallic blue that they always wear with the big Giants logo and the classic jerseys. Oh my God. I think that would, I would probably do everything in my power to go to every Giants game, every Giants home game, just to see those uniforms in person as often as I can. So just want to throw that out there, hear your thoughts on that and what you think about the Giants uniforms and whether or not you think that they should maybe make a change to their uniform and implement a new era here uh, within the next couple of years. I mean, look, I love the color rush concepts. I love the, the throwbacks, the red jersey. Remember like the old red jerseys they used to throw on every now and then? Um, and look, I think it's fun for the game. I think it's fun to get creative. I think it's it's fun to do different things. And, you know, the same old, same old is it gets boring after a while. But like, look, like it's it's a game. Like have fun with it. Enjoy the process. Enjoy doing creative things. Um, you know, change up the color schemes, obviously relevant to the Giants, but change up the color, of the color schemes to, you know, some vintage stuff and, you know, I'm 100% for it. Like, why not? You know what I mean? Just don't put those leather helmets on. And that's the only thing I would suggest not doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, brother. I just think it's cool seeing all these different teams around the league. Seahawks with their new throwbacks. Those are beautiful. Um, I think even the Jets are rumored to be bringing back that old school, like bright green that they used to wear. That should be exciting. So I just love all the different uniform combinations that we're seeing in the NFL right now. It's exciting. And I know the Giants have those throwbacks from the 80s that they implemented last year, but I like to see them do more. Maybe they should bring back the red jerseys that you just mentioned, Alex. If you guys have any strong opinions on Giants uniforms, of course, drop those opinions down below in the comment section. But that pretty much wraps this one up. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, threads, at Fireside Giants. And, of course, we will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one. And... Let's go Giants.